David De Gea's goalkeeping heroics in Manchester United's recent 1-0 win against Tottenham Hotspur were remarkable for many reasons. Perhaps not since Jan Tomaszewski has Wembley Stadium witnessed a Sondiko shaped force field of such invincibility. In fact, his instinctive reactions to a series of helpfully aimed Spurs shots ranked third on the all-time Premier League list for most saves in a single game. But the Spaniard's performance was also noteworthy for the amount of time he wasted. It's been reported that De Gea's goal kicks amounted to almost 5% of the match, which saw a total of 10 restarts from the away side, taking an average of 26 seconds per clearance. While the club's enduring attack-attack-attack philosophy has clearly still to recover from Jose Mourinho's ideological hack, this serves to illustrate a broader issue at the centre of football, which the sports authorities are now seeking to address. In November, the International FA Board, the IFAB, confirmed plans to discuss a range of measures intended to combat time wasting. Founded upon the organisation's 2017 Play Fair initiative, the news came shortly after a Premier League match between Cardiff and Burnley, which saw the ball in play for 42 minutes and 2 seconds. Officially confirmed as the shortest amount of actual playing time in the English top flight since December 2013, when supporters enjoyed 40 minutes and 50 seconds of Stoke City vs Aston Villa, fans spent 8 minutes waiting for Cardiff's Sean Morrison to work his way through 20 throw-ins. For some time, pressure has been growing on the international football community to reconsider traditional timekeeping measures, a fact highlighted on the biggest stage at last summer's World Cup tournament. The game's showpiece event featured the dazzling spectacle of Neymar rolling around on the grass for approximately 15 minutes. That competition actually provided an even more acute illustration of the damaging and defining impact such behaviour can have on the sport. In July, 538, a website that uses data to analyse happenings in global news and sport, crunched the numbers on Russia's footballing fiesta. Founded by famed statistician Nate Silver, who successfully predicted the outcome in 49 of the 50 states at the 2008 US presidential election, they targeted two key themes – amount of time wasted by each team at the tournament, and the accuracy of stoppage time added by referees at every match. Their findings were simultaneously alarming and depressingly predictable. In the first example, isolating five basic activities that allowed players to control game pace – throw-ins, goal kicks, corner kicks, free kicks and substitutions – a total of 4,529 points of data sourced from 48 group stage games revealed teams that are leading take about 34% longer to complete these activities than teams that are trailing. In the second example, 538 used a stopwatch and a team of timekeepers to track all 3,194 stoppages during the first 32 games played at the World Cup. Their findings confirmed that the current system is wildly inaccurate, a fact graphically underlined by the Group B game between Iran and Morocco. Each side used all three substitutes. There was only one booking, no goals were scored. In a group with Spain and Portugal, both teams presumably were eager to steal a crucial three points and break the nil-nil tie. When the game reached the 90-minute mark, the fourth official raised the electronic board to indicate six minutes of added time. It should have read 14 minutes, they explained. In a bid to address the issue, the IFAB have proposed a range of ideas to reduce time wasting and speed up the game. These measures include stricter calculation of additional time and goalkeepers holding the ball. Here, referees will be directed to stop the clock whenever incidents such as a goal, penalty, injury or substitution take place and enforce the six seconds rule when goalkeepers are in possession. Other strategies listed as part of play fair include self-passing at a free kick, corner kick and goal kick. This idea, which would allow a fouled player to continue playing directly after a foul, was part of the original 1863 laws of the game. Further options include moving the ball at goal kicks and goal kick position. These would rethink the existing parameters of the sport at the point of a goalkeeper restarting play. Elsewhere, more dramatic policy changes have also been outlined. For example, effective playing time. This centres on stopping the clock whenever the ball is out of play and could result in a match consisting of two periods of 30 minutes rather than 45. Such a radical change would not only mean that there would be less point in players wasting time, but it would also mean that in a competition every club would play exactly the same amount of EPT, explained the IFAB. Another option is stadium clocks. This would provide a direct and accurate visualisation for fans to the referee's official match calculations. However, in an interview with TIFO, the IFAB explained that their immediate priority at the upcoming AGM in Aberdeen would centre on simple and immediate measures, namely the potentially mandatory introduction of one specific strategy – substitutions. 
This commands substituted players to leave the field of play by the nearest boundary rather than at the halfway line, and this has already been successfully trialled globally. Elsewhere, the organisation, which includes four British football associations, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, and FIFA, remain focused on the landmark recent introduction of video assistant referees, and are seeking to build greater education about the laws of the game to the sport's global audience. The IFAB told TIFO, Our goal has always been and will continue to be the development of the laws of the game, and how the game is played based on what football wants but we also want to ensure the image of the game can improve by focusing any relevant amendments on the behaviour and fairness of the on-field play.